The Second Amendment doesn't protect It doesn't guarantee you anything. And this is important to distinguish because the person who wrote this article doesn't understand the difference. What gives it away is, should I be able? And I'm not gonna pretend to be some super genius that somehow figured out the keys to understanding the Constitution. This actually tripped me up for years. And it's very important because if you take the Second Amendment, how it's being sold on its face value, that is a document going to the people telling them what they're able to do, there's room for interpretation. There's wiggle room where things can slide through. But taking a more deep, more further analysis on the Constitution, look at right at the top of it. We the people. That doesn't sound like we the government. No, that sounds like we the people. The difference is, is most people look at the Second Amendment and they see that as a document from the government telling the people what they're able to do. And that's not the case. That is a document from the people telling the government what they're supposed to be able to do, which puts it in a whole other context. So now, look at the Second Amendment and look at it as a document from the people to the government. What power is given to the government when it involves bearing arms, firearms, any kind of arm whatsoever? As you'll notice, it says right there, shall not be infringed. You shall not make laws that can infringe somebody's rights to bear arms. That is way more powerful, because when you look at it as a document from the government to the people, it shall not be infringed. Well, if the government wrote it, well, they can just rewrite it, or modify it, or change it, or to advance it with time. That we, we meant shall not be infringed with black powder and musket. Today, you know, with all these modern weapons, you know, now we're going to have some restrictions in there. But when you look at it from a document from the people to the government, well, they can't be changed unless we decide it should be changed. So I can decide whether or not what I want or do not want to have. The government cannot. It doesn't even make sense from the government to the people because what would shall not be infringed mean if you're saying it to the people? You can't go steal your neighbor's firearm? Well, I mean, that's obvious, but that, that's all it would mean is you can't infringe other people from infringing on your Second Amendment right. Again, from the people to the government, now that makes sense. The article that was written was called Bearing Arms. Make sure to get this video to them so they understand the difference between whether the document came from the government to the people or from the people to the government. But now on with the story. So what the story is about is somebody that is suing a guy named Jake. He is suing the government. He lives in Wyoming for his ability to make his M16 full auto. And I truly believe that is the next step. It's not gonna happen, you know, just overnight, one Supreme Court decision to rule them all, it'll be little decisions. The next step in the fight against the NFA would to be to reopen the registry. That, honestly, I think is the next logical step. Will Jake's case do it? I don't know, we'll have to see. It all kind of depends but he's headed in the right direction. That is the next weak place in the armor for us to stick in the knife and start tearing down the NFA. So what he did is on December 8th, he filed with the ATF to try to get a tax stamp so he can make his M16 full auto. The ATF denied it, and so now he's suing. And the reason I think it's such a wide open gap and a way for us to get in there is because in Bruin, they acknowledged that the history in Heller is wrong. Justice Breyer said, the historical evidence conflicted with Heller. He recalled that in McDonald, we had professors of history who ran departments in the English Civil War. And they all said the history in Heller was wrong. Now they should have addressed it, but they didn't. But they did in fact acknowledge that it was wrong. I also believe that's going to be his biggest hurdle because in Bruin they acknowledge that the history in Heller is wrong, but they didn't correct it. They should have. Now, they might have been waiting for another case such as this to come along to correct the history in Heller. So what am I talking about the history in Heller is wrong? In Heller, he says that dangerous and unusual has history and context to be restricted. What he did is he took the first sentence out of a law called an affray it talks about dangerous or unusual weapons, not and. And 
that there's a law against it. But you only have to read like one more sentence down to completely debunk what he's saying. What an affray was is so you have like different levels of public disturbances. So disturbing the peace, that's one. The next one would be like an affray. That's disturbing the peace with a weapon. No restriction there, but it's how you have that weapon. Say for example, this is considered a weapon. It is not unusual for me to have it in this video. So I can't be charged with an affray. Say I went into a courtroom and I held it because it says an affray in a manner that threatens the public. Uh, that might not be the exact con wording, but that's the general idea behind it. So if I like go into a courtroom and I'm like, judge, I disagree with you. I'm about to paddle your ass. Now that would be when I would be charged with an affray. As a matter of fact, somebody got charged with an affray for riding a horse through a courtroom. Last time I checked, horses aren't full auto. So... An affray has nothing to do with any particular weapon. It's how you brandish that weapon. It basically boils down to brandishing a weapon in a way that terrifies the general public. That is an affray. Well, in the Heller decision, Judge Scalia got rid of all of it. Like, the whole paragraph on what an affray is just took out the sentence, dangerous and unusual, or I can't, I can't remember if it was dangerous and unusual or dangerous or unusual. Took that out and said, there, there's your history right there. That's why we're not going to get rid of the NFA, even though those are common use weapons in the military that a militia deserves to have. Well, it says right there in a fray that there were weapons restrictions going all the way back to 1791. So yes, they did acknowledge in the Bruin decision that the history in Heller is wrong, and I believe it is open for attack. And it should be, because it's ridiculous. Why are we not allowed to have machine guns? It clearly says in the Second Amendment, the government is not allowed to do any firearms laws whatsoever. Any laws at all that has anything to do with a weapon. We are allowed to have any and all weapons we see fit. Now, the next reason why I believe he has a very strong case here is because it's been to the Supreme Court on more than one occasion, and they've always determined you cannot tax a right. Nobody can. Now, the reason that the NFA happened is because Congress has a taxing power. They are allowed to tax certain things, except for rights. And, well, recently, you know, there's been an exception carved out since the 30s for guns and gun rights, but I believe that should be challenged. It should have been shut down in Miller. It should have been shut down in Heller. It should have been shut down in Bruin. The only real attempt for this to go through was probably Miller. Now, there has been cases that have made it up to the Supreme Court where somebody got caught with a machine gun and they go for appeal because they would have paid the tax if they were allowed to. But because they couldn't pay the tax, well, it basically it went up to the Supreme Court and their case would get dismissed. The Supreme Court said that no. In those particular cases, now they weren't suing to have the NFA removed or anything like that. They just wanted their case dismissed and the Supreme Court would dismiss their case. So for a tax to be legitimate, you have to collect on it. Otherwise, it's no longer a tax. Because they don't collect on taxes for firearms made after 1986, well, that's no longer a tax, which makes it no longer the Congress's ability to be able to do it. So because the NFA is not a tax, it is a, reg a restriction and or ban, which is an infringement on the Second Amendment. Therefore, it is unconstitutional. So... The NFA is not a legitimate tax. You can't tax a right. In Bruin, they already acknowledge that the history in Heller is wrong. He, I feel, with the right attorney, has a very solid chance at, at worst reopening up the registry. So newly manufactured machine guns can be registered with the ATF. At best, removing the NFA tax altogether. At like super, 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 super best, Basically taking down the last racist law we have on the books, which would be gun laws. Anyway, hope you guys appreciated this video. Found it at least a little bit entertaining, if not educational. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. And you can support me directly by shopping at OnlyTacticalFans.com. Now there's no inventory there right now. Because you guys are savages and you bought it out the day I launched it. But it's coming, I promise. There will be more inventory there soon. But shipping is so incredibly slow. It's not here yet, but it will be there soon. 
You can subscribe to the little shopping thing right there that'll let you know as soon as there's inventory there if you want to wait for the day some sort of inventory drops. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe.